Um, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to speak here. It's very humbling. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rogers, for taking the risk of putting me up here. Um, the, I'm really praying that uh, I will uh, share what uh, the Lord has put in my life. And, uh, but just want to say thank you so much for all the preparations for the convener that uh, who do this up 10 very organized, and um, uh, thank you. And I, I know that uh, all behind that is that uh, Mrs. Rogers is there behind the scene. And so thank you for your hard work. Really appreciate that. All right, so um, my family, uh, I have four children. Um, and um, uh, in the uh, brochure, I think it's left as a three daughters, and my own son is there. I don't know if they open the brackets to add more in my family, but I think I have my quiver full, so we are four uh, children, and uh, my wife and I are happy with that. And so uh, my wife is in the yellow there, and uh, she is um, with us as well in prayer right now while I'm speaking. So today, <clears throat> my um, topic is addressing the challenges of sending, and uh, this is where we're talking about, okay, uh, we have the Great Commission. Um, uh, been speaking all this week. Dr. Lawless taught us with that uh, non-negotiable uh, uh, practice of what is it, making disciples, teachings, uh, proclaiming the word, but also the non-negotiable of the Great Commissions. And we know uh, this is some of the theme that leads us into the mission field all the time. And uh, the churches are the ones that are called to do this. And uh, today I want to remind us of this uh, uh, theme of uh, uh, Great Commission. Uh, Jesus himself uh, gave the disciple um, a divine strategy about uh, before he is ascended to heaven, he called together his disciple, and in Acts 1-4, uh, he says, gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised to which he said, you heard from me. So Jesus is telling the disciple before he was ascended to the heavens, okay, wait before you go and do the great commissions that I've told you to do. Uh, the Father has promised us the Holy Spirit, and now um, uh, uh, I have promised you as well uh, to, for the Holy Spirit to come so that you can be my witness. And that is the divine strategy that Jesus gave his disciple doing this God's missions. You know, the, the, an excellent reminder for us as a church uh, that we are uh, empowered by this Holy Spirit to be a witness of um, God's love and grace. And wherever we're going, we are representing this. The question for us is, how are we doing with that Great Commission? How are we doing as a church, as a, an institution, as an individual uh, of our um, uh, uh, walk in witnessing and taking the gospel to the nations and taking the gospel to wherever have not heard about it. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that throughout this session, uh, but I want to start with a statistic that we see uh, on the population of Africa. Um, we have seen that statistic, as uh, Dr. Hamilton just said, that the statistics are always different and sometimes they are not accurate, but um, uh, as for now, I see uh, from the data from the uh, United Nations um, funds, uh, populations that are uh, 1.4 billion as uh, of 2023, uh, which means 16% of, of the world populations lives in Africa uh, with that. And then uh, with the statistic as a, um, of 2020, approximately 640 million people in Africa, which is 50% of the population of Africa, uh, identify as a Christian. Uh, and that is, needs to be uh, determined, like what, what kind of Christians they are, you know. But um, that this, this is like high uh, numbers of uh, statistics of identifying themselves as a Christians. And then the questions again, asking us, okay, how are they doing with these great commissions? And how are we doing in sending them into the nations for uh, that? And so a Kenyan theologian, I'm going to leave you with this quote. Uh, that um, uh, we're all familiar with John S. Mbiti. Uh, he said, and I quote here, the church in Africa has far too long been missionary minded, but only in terms of receiving missionaries and depending on them, this philosophy must change. This code is over 50 years old. 
Uh, I know that many of us in this room don't believe in this anymore, but if we think about our churches in the African uh, places, I believe some of these churches are still believing, and this is uh, something that's still happening in all of the churches. And so we need to think about what he's talking about. Okay, so church in Africa has been too long been missionary-minded, but only in terms of receiving missionaries and depending on them. And this philosophy must change. But Theodore also wrote, the missions introduced a clear dichotomy. Mission is the foreigner's affair, the church is the natives. And so we have these different views of, okay, the mission is for the foreigners. And we, Dr. Hamilton just uh, asked that question today. Okay, if you go out there and see what do people think about missionaries or the white people, the, the people that from overseas, and maybe in this room, maybe not many of us believe in that anymore, but many African churches still believe in that. Many African people still believe in that missionary are only for the foreigners, for the white people. And uh, for the church, we are full in the, the, the building in our church, in African churches, and, but we are focusing on our churches only. Um, Kanye Oro, also wrote, the African church have misunderstood their call to mission. The word mission itself raises certain ambiguities in our understanding. Mention mission and missionaries, and you think all of the foreigner brothers and sisters who live in our villages working in hospitals, translating our Bibles, and teaching women hygiene and sewing. Dr. Hamilton just uh, uh, talked about that as well a little bit, about translating our Bibles. You know, think, we think that only the white people does it. Thus, missions among ourselves and for ourselves is not an issue that keeps us awake with concern. So here, I'd love to just to go a little bit in details, a little bit of you know, what we think um, as African. The church in Africa will not take her rightful place in the missions unless she deals adequately with the numerous issues related to the place of Africa in the world. So that is very important for us to realize. And I want to submit today that as long as such a misunderstanding persists, there will be no significant qualitative participation of African churches sending African missionaries to the ends of the earth. Africans will continue to positive, position themselves as a mission recipient, because that is what's been passed on to generations, thereby delaying the requirement to rethink our mission task as Africans in Africa. The mission is what defines the local church. We talked about that this week, and we talk about that as an institution, we need to investigate the barriers to African churches sending and offer suggestions for practical solutions to overcome these barriers, including visions, training, and funding issues while seeking indigenous answers to African challenges. So, Let's discuss a little bit what are some of the challenges among the African churches of sending African missionaries to the rest of the world. And uh, we will discuss at least four issues or challenges. Um, the list are not exhaustive, but there's more, but I would like to focus on these four challenges for now. So the first challenges that I want to focus is the inward looking, the challenge of sustainable growth. Uh, Dr. Lawless talked as, uh, as well about this inward looking this morning, and I really appreciate the outside view that he brought in. in. I'm kind of looking from the inside view of things in these uh, challenges of sustainable growth. And this must be addressed in our churches, because African church loves to grow their church attendance and often do not prioritize a missiological healthy community of faith that will work too attract and support mission efforts in many African countries. So churches have not yet defined clear policies for sending missionaries or established organizations for their support. So there's not been clear structure or uh, ways of telling the church members about how to do missions and how to instruct them in doing missions. And so that what happening is that these are missing in the services. Uh, Mendel Taylor, a church history scholar, argues that if the churches are not sending people to reach the lost around the world, 
They are ignoring a crucial part of their reason for existence. That is very a hard word for us as a church. And Taylor said, and I quote, he says, the church must send or the church will end. So the goal, the, one of the existing foundations for the church is not only to gather the people in the, build, the four buildings, it is for outward focus as well by sending others to go and be a part of being blessings to the other nations. And that is what we're missing in the church. And biblically, we cannot speak of mission apart from the church and vice versa. And we cannot speak of the church apart from the missions. Often African churches are stuck with the misunderstanding, how we just talk about that, that they are just receiving churches. These are receiving recipients of missionaries. And because of this unconscious view, the African church see this is a usual way how to run church. And that's most exactly a routine that's happening. So they're just bringing people. They are happy to have missionaries come into their church. They are happy, happy to see different faces and just happy that the church is growing and that stays there. They still see the mission as something that the foreigner does, but not the Africans. I'm talking about not all the churches in Africa. Forgive me if you did come across that way, but certain churches often in Africa still have this mindset that are still in that area. Um, they have little or no sense of shame or guilt about the sin, the omission of mission, which is not doing anything about this Great commissions, this non-negotiable uh, making disciples, teaching them, baptizing them, and this non-negotiable of great commissions. Since the church wants to grow their numbers, they focus only on the looking in the inward. Such inward focus is the common core issue in the African churches. The average, I'm saying the average church in Africa does not have any specific section of its worship dedicated to the subject of mission. In other words, the mission is absent in our worship services. And if you are a pastor, and if you lead a church, and mission is not part of that services, I love the way the, the, the Dr. Lawless uh, mentioned in how they're doing the chapel service and how they teach in the classroom. Um, but this also needs to be continually be involved in our churches. And if you are, if you are a pastor, and then this is part that we shouldn't miss in our congregations meeting as well, in our community believers meeting. This is a barrier to the African church is doing the mission of God. And people love to come to church, but have no desire to go out of the church. That's one thing that the churches in Africa are in common. We love to have a good time in church. We love to sing. We love to praise God. We love to have a great time. But then as soon as we go out, we just focus into our everyday lives and the struggles of life. And then we forgot about the missions of God. That's what we have called for. We love experiencing God within the church more than experiencing obedience to himself beyond the church in mission witness. How many African churches are experiencing this routine? If you look around the churches, in your area, in your regions, in your nation, what do you think? You know, how many of the churches are doing this the same over and over again? And even when they attend church prayer meeting, we talk about prayer meeting this morning, the request in the church when you talk about prayer meeting evolves with praying for the sick, praying for their needs, praying for their businesses to be blessed. And so that's kind of how the prayer is going on in our churches sometimes, in different places or different um, uh, denominations as well. So the challenge of sustainable growth must be addressed, as well as the great need to incorporate the outward focus into a priority of the church's purpose. This idea of African church functioning as a rece receiving churches must stop and be replaced with the idea of African churches becoming sending and giving churches. Amen? Indeed, the very idea of giving is the next great challenge for us to talk about. The focus of 
upon receiving not only handicaps the missions response to African churches, but it creates a dependent mindset. And this is what I'm going to talk the second um, uh, challenges or issues that we talk about is the poverty and suffering mindset, the challenges of dependency. Anytime we talk about finances, anytime we talk about missionaries, we all think about numbers and figures and dollars and rands and whatever currency we're talking about. And, and these are some of the things that create problems within the mission work or between a church and missionaries that working together uh, with this idea of dependency. Um, suffering also due to poverty and often persecutions are common concern in Africa, often fostered in an attitude of dependency in Africa, in both political and also ecclesiastical considerations. Unfortunately, the African church might not understand this dependency as a problem. The first things we need to do is we need to realize that there's a problem, and I think that is the first solution of getting after the problem is acknowledging that we have a problem, and the problem is dependency for us African churches and for us African Christians and African people always having this mindset of dependency. African churches see themselves as poor compared to Western churches. I'm sorry for saying that, but that's some of the ideas that's going on in, in, in our minds uh, when we grew up. When I grew up, I had that I, uh, also in my life. They think of themselves unable to afford the luxury to provide the expenses of sending missionaries. That is just like a normal way of thinking for some many Africans. Their poverty provides a reasonable and convenient Excuses not to think of being mission sent in churches because of this mindset, because of this, okay, we can't do it, the poverty, the sufferings that we are already uh, uh, um, having in our lives is already enough for us to think about how can we even think about going into a mission or doing another mission or even crossing a sea to do that. In other words, the lack of money, money and material resources are seen as the real hindrances to the work of missions, especially when it involves leaving their own countries and or the continent himself. I just want to submit as well that from the beginning, uh, and I'm speaking to, to those foreigners who have bring in the gospel in, in Africa, and this is not only just recently, but in, from the beginning, uh, some of the missionary um, Enterprise helped create a spirit of dependency within the indigenous churches in how the missionaries brought both the gospel and funding support. I'm not saying that we can't work together. I'm not saying that that is bad, a way of doing things. But some of these ideas of bringing the gospel and the funding support creates this mindset of dependency in the African churches. And not only did the missionaries bring the gospel message to Africa, but also they brought the necessary financial aid to establish institutions and ministries in Africa, which is good. But Africans need to understand uh, words of collaborations. And I don't really want to uh, say the word partnership. Sometimes that's kind of confusing for many people. But collaborations, I believe, is it's a, it's a working together, uh, and that is part of our culture. And so it's like, I bring my part, you bring your part, we work together, we do something together. Well, the idea of my be with the partnership with the confusions, okay, what they can do for me, I can do from that, from what they received. So we need to kind of think about this problem as well. Indeed, both the missionaries and the indigenous church have viewed the work of the African church as a responsibility of those who have the money, the Western churches. And that is quite what's happening quite a lot in different places. And we need to think about those lines. As a result, when African church receives support from the missionaries or the missionary organization, or directly from individual churches, individual overseas people, they grow dependent upon that support. That's, that's the problem of these pitfalls of uh, dependency 
a mindset as well. The support which produces dependency continues to be the pitfall of the Africans. We need to uh, think about this in our institutions when we come uh, help these institutions or help, come and help churches or come and help um, the African uh, not to create this uh, uh, idea of dependency. I believe many of us here have some stories, some testimonies working with uh, uh, these foreigners, missionaries coming in and still have this kind of idea and maybe even some of those created some quarrels or confusions or a little bit of fight between indigenous workers and the missionaries because of this idea and issues of money and this dependency mindset, poverty mindset. So such dependency acts like a parasite, I'll say, that consumes the missions potency of African churches and causes them to stumble and keeps them from engaging in the task of mission, especially when it involves crossing lands and sea. So they don't see, we don't see that idea of going unless we know that somebody is going to support us. And we forgot that that's not the way we go and we go on a mission because it's not the missionaries calling us to go. It is God who's calling us to go. And that is when we come back to the great commissions and the, 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 the divine strategies that Jesus gave to his disciples. And so I want to go say and submit to you that the suffering and the poverty experienced by the African church has greatly limited their visions concerning global missions. The work of missions does not seem to be an option because Africans are continuing to suffer and struggle, survive financially in their homeland. This is life, how it works. They wonder how much more they would struggle if they left their home and go to another country that they're unfamiliar to their place. There are some ideas that they have in their minds about this. The, questions, the question they face is, without having a pocket full of money, like the foreigner missionaries, how can we go to a foreign land to do a mission? So that's kind of the questions maybe they have in their minds. So what African churches fail to realize is that even the Western missionaries raise support to go to a different places. Isn't that right for you um, foreigners who come in? The church is where you come from, help you to go, and other churches, you go to different places and you know, raise money, you talk to different people, and we think that the African thinks that, right, because you have the money and you just come like that. But we fail to realize that there's an effort that has been done behind the scene that you go as well to raise support before you come and before you do your mission work. So the key is that missionary go from church to church to raise support, or there is a sending agency that allows indigenous missionaries to go. And this is something that I'm going to talk in my next point later, but. Um, uh, this idea of agency sending is very important. African church needs to learn from established missionary organizations like the IMB, including those from other countries, as Africa needs better support lines from churches to many missionaries. The lesson learned from missionary organizations will help future African missionaries to be more effective for Christ. However, if this poverty mindset and this spirit of dependency are not addressed, African church will continue to be stagnant in growing their attendance and negligent in the sending and funding missionaries. And so this is very important that we talk about this uh, to our institutions, reminding our students, reminding our churches uh, the ideas of poverty mindset, uh, um, how we also have this uh, 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 dependency mindset that uh, we have in our culture. The third uh, issue that I talk, or the challenges, is the lack of church mission structure. And uh, I just introduced that a little bit a while ago. The challenge of developing and establishing a mission department is really important because God has called the African churches to be ascending 
churches as well. And those wishing to support African missionaries must engage local African churches intentionally and strategically. However, there will be no systematic plan to move from this dependency mentality without a proper structure. And to overcome these crippling barriers, a process of intentional missionary education will be required in the African church. This process should result in churches being responsible for recruiting, training, but also deploying and supporting mission efforts. We must discover some practical ways that churches can participate as centers in the global missions and evangelism efforts. And I realize, and I can submit as well to you, that the quest for appropriate models of missions collaboration has been well recognized. And that is some of the things that we need to talk, we need to discuss. Um, uh, it's, it is time for the African church to develop that kind of uh, uh, a vision, a clear vision and strategy for engaging in the missions faithfully and effectively. Because if we don't do that, we will continue to go around the circle and around the mountains and talking about missions, but not having the means or to, to, the way of doing it. We need to find a way of doing it together as African churches. The African church has lacked strategy for missions. That is what's been lacking. And many do not even consider a plan or strategy for how they will obey the Great Commissions. So if you ask some churches talking about missions, I mean, they, they might talk about missions, but when you ask a question like, how are they going to accomplish that? They have no answer. There is no strategy. There is no plan of how are we going to do that. But they love talking about it. They love talking about missions. They love talking about going on the missions. But lack of strategy, of lack of planning, and lack of ways of how to attain, how to do that. The absence of such articulation will continue to handicap the churches if we don't intentionally do what we're supposed to do in this uh, mission endeavor. African church should consider joining forces in creating a structure where a group of church works together to answer those questions. And so I'm calling and suggesting as well and submitting to all of us that these collaborations need to start among our nations in Africa. And might be two different nations, three nations, or different nations coming together and creating this agency, creating this, uh, 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 sending agency together. And that way, in this continent, we might have our own sending strong agency that we use as the, our churches are participating in helping our missionaries to go into the rest of the world. And what is preventing us from doing that? And I think Dr. Alexander um, this morning addresses some of the issues like, how many people are working together in these institutions here or churches that we're presenting? How are we working together? And this is what is lacking. The unifications of the church, the unification of the uh, uh, continent uh, as, as a, a nations together, missing this idea of coming together and creating this uh, plan and strategic sending agency that needs to be in place. The last um, issue or uh, challenges that we see here is the African missionary, um, the challenge of role models. I'm talking about the role models um, in terms of in the African history of mission. I believe there are some great people who have done great things. Um, and they have done things that amazed us as Africans, but also amazed the other missionaries from overseas. Um, but however, we look at missionary biographies, we always hear about Western missionaries mostly. Where are the Africans? Where, where, where are the, uh, the, the, the African missionaries that have done great things? Where are the role models that we have? And then there are some, I know many of you know many names of, of African role models, theologians that we know, scholars that, you know, some of our founding theologian, but 
In these days, where are they? What happened to them? Uh, and they're the ones should be going back to the churches and testifying what God is doing among the nations. And if there is, there are, then, then those people are the ones who need to call to be a model for the new next generations. I believe that is very important. But there are not enough role models among the African churches that people can look up to in engaging and in doing missions as we talked this morning about, okay, it starts from ourselves. When Dr. Lawless said about being broken and being, you know, having that heart for the lost. And so if we don't do that and we don't model that to our church, we don't model that to the next generations, how are we going to tell them to go and be part of a mission? As this kind of report is lacking, no one comes back to the church and testify God's goodness in through their lives. And so the importance of stories and testimonies will inspire the church to engage more in missions. And that is really lacking in our churches. There's not enough platform for the missionaries, indigenous missionaries, to be given a platform to share and to do things about the missions because what we're talking about is we're thinking that when we share, when we send those platforms, and then that means they're going to ask for money. And so we don't do always an offering for a mission. And so we don't want to give those platforms. And so we don't want to give a testimony uh, for, for, for the models of missionary that we have. And this needs to be changed. And this needs to be addressed in our churches. We need to give that back to God that, you know, Sending this missionary to share what God is doing is part of glorifying God, part of our worship service to God, telling what God has done in the nations. It will help the congregations to be part of what God is doing around the globe. They will be proud to see, to see where the support goes because someone went and came back to report what God has done. The new African generations are full of young people. But how? Will we mobilize them for mission if we, if we are not showing them the role models in the continent? The lack of role models must change. May our bookstores, I'm looking out outside of the bookstore, some of them are already there. There are some African figures there. I'm praising God for that. But I think we need more uh, uh, African models that need to be published and need to be let down to the churches, in our church bulletins, in our uh, missionary boards in our church to report what the African missionary has done around the globe in the nations. So those are some of the four challenges that I talk. As, as I said, it's, uh, uh, the list is not exhaustive. I, I believe that some of the speakers this week uh, already touches some of the other issues as well. Um, but let's move on to some of the suggestions that um, uh, we can um, uh, discuss among ourselves. And the first things I wanna, uh, I wanna uh, submit to you is prayer. Uh, and I mentioned this morning, uh, I'm sorry for those people who have been offended of that, but uh, Baptists, we love food, you know? And we love eating together, we love to come together, but when it comes to prayer meeting, we are kind of lacking of that zeal and passions to be together when we pray together. Yet, the mission of God, the work of God, everything that we do evolves around these prayers. And, and we're talking about sending missionaries to African churches, sending African missionaries. Does the African church involve of times of prayer, intercession, to, to pray about sending people? to pray about the, those who have been sent. We talk about that with Dr. Lawless. I appreciate it. I told him this, morning, this afternoon, I say, thank you, Dr. Lawless. Uh, you've, you've, you've just touched everything that I'm going to share. But prayer is vital in our mission, you know, in the Great Commissions. And this is even for ourselves, for our individual walk with God. Intimacy with God is more important than success in the ministry. And so, Yes, okay, thank you, sir, yes. And so, first, prayer is essential to missions. African church can spend so much time focusing on strategies and logistic and preparation that we can neglect a vital component 
and that is prayer. The prayer for missions expressed the Christian's highest calling, the worship of God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, the suggestions I uh, give as well as the collaboration between African church must be established. We need to create these collaborations. We need to, to meet together, we need to talk together, and we need to discuss how can we come together, how can we create something together so that we can send our missionaries to the rest of the world. And this is something that is lacking right now in Africa. There are some who are already doing this, but not enough for the continent and not enough for the different nations. And we need to come together. And this is the place where we do networking and this is the place where we can start these collaborations so that we can go and send this uh, um, uh, uh, idea of sending people. The next suggestion is that intentional missional structure and platform needs to be used within the African churches. So we need to give platform to the people in our churches. How are they know about missions? How, unless we taught them, unless we are uh, sharing testimonies and bringing missionaries and telling them what we do, and then also giving this platform of learning about missions and involving in the missions and sending and giving into the missions. And this is very important. If we don't do this intentionally in our church, in our institution, we can't really see things happening and people can't even engage into that. And so African churches need to give this platform and intentionally incorporate this mission sending in the church uh, so that they can, you know, the African immigrants, Dr. Hamilton just talked about that right now, and I was really blessed by it. Why not invest the resources in Africa, you know? Um, some of these are people that already going to immigrate and to work in other places, and they can be used, as Dr. Hamilton just said, how are we going to motivate them, also train them, that even if they're called for a career in their work, then, then they are can be a missionary and they can be also be a blessing to the nations. But apart from that, we're talking about the students as well. There are so many students, Dr. Hamilton just shared statistics of how many African students are going into the nations and unless we are targeting those as well, our church is helping them as well to do that, we are not going to move forward as an African church is sending into the world. So we need to focus on those people as well, those immigrants, those students, those people that work in, in different capacities to do that. And so as a conclusion, now it's the time for us African churches. It's the time for us to seize the opportunity to help and fulfill the great commissions and take on the responsibilities to um, the missionary task and face the challenges of developing an effective missionary efforts within the different cultures. And so I want to submit that to you uh, we need to move out from the, uh, the, the uh, mindset of being only a recipient of missionaries, but to also send missionaries into the world. And we need to discuss together the ways of doing that by creating a collaboration of uh, work together, networking together to do that, but also moving away from the mindset of poverty and dependency and also working together with our missionaries. So that is what I want to share with you today about these challenges of sending African churches, sending African missionaries to the rest of the world. May we do that. May we walk with that. May we also submit ourselves, be the role models to our African brothers and sisters around the world. May God bless you. So in terms of discussions, I have uh, three things here to share. Uh, what type of training and equipping do your institution provides to address the sending challenges? Um, and the second one is discuss some of the challenges that you see in, the, in your institutions or churches that you see. And last one, how do we collaborate and start our African sending agency, like roles of the indigenous and the roles of the missionaries, foreigners? They can work together but not in the spirit of dependency, but in, in a collaboration. And so if you can discuss about this a little bit.